How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week eight. We're still perfect on the regular season somehow. 7-0, and sitting at number four in the country. We've got a game here against the Miami Hurricanes. They're 3-2 and two on the season. However, they are the higher overall in this matchup, which is a little bit worrisome. It shouldn't be by too much, but a couple overall could make a, a bit of a difference. Offensively, they seem to be a little bit more efficient than us. However, on defense, we're definitely leading that charge. Five prospects visiting in this game. As Miami, honestly, they're three and two, but it's not impressive. Their two losses are to Georgia Southern in Bowling Green, and they were only able to beat Duke, North Carolina, and Mizzou so far. No teams uh, that they've beaten have a winning record. So I think that that bodes pretty well for us. We'll just need to make sure that we're playing kind of at our A game. Uh, try to avoid any stupid mistakes. Uh, we saw some upsets of ranked teams last week. We'll see if there's any others. Uh, Nebraska playing at number three, undefeated Purdue, who jumped us after a close win against Maryland last week. Kansas, wait, what? Kansas is ranked number six in the country. I don't know how I missed that before. Only four games played for the Jayhawks, but they are 4-0. They'll have to play a number 14, Oklahoma, who's coming off of a loss against Texas. Um, any other ones? We've got Arkansas and Alabama playing. We've got USC and Notre Dame playing. And we've got Old Miss and LSU. Interesting looking additional votes. Receiving Clemson, Oregon State both dropped out last week. So that's... Uh, a little bit interesting. We won't take a full look here at the conference standings, but I do want to see our division and the other division in the ACC to see what we're standing at. Right now, Miami's in second. It would be great if we could get the win over them, give them their first loss in conference, and that way we would be the only person or the only team undefeated with the conference record. In the Atlantic division right now, it's Louisville leading the charge. Uh, Notre Dame already has two conference losses, which is great news for us because we don't want to have to play them. Somehow Clemson 2-3, and 0-3 oh in conference at 95 overall. So if they want to start knocking off uh, teams with uh, zero or one losses, that would be great. But I'll tell you one thing. I would not mind uh, getting to play Louisville in the ACC championship game. Now with our recruiting, it is now week eight. So we lost 500 points. We only have two levels into the closer. Uh, we are, what, 2,000 XP away from getting that level up, so it might happen this week. I highly doubt it. Um, so we lost 500 points in our recruiting, which isn't the biggest thing. Uh, we're still looking good. No commits yet, but there are a ton of guys that we are looking really good with. I mean, just scrolling through by overall, we're either in the lead or gaining on people rapidly. And this is all, we're still at 78 overall here. So this could be one of the best uh, recru recruiting classes I've ever seen. And this is coming off of our last season one where we struggled and, and barely picked up anybody. So a lot going on there. One more guy ready for a visit. It's John Vincent, 69 overall corner. Uh, we're going to send him to the Duke game to make sure that we get those extra complimentary visits. And that'll give us actually a little bit of XP. So that's pretty big as well. Um, and let me go through. We have a couple of guys who have committed elsewhere, I think, in the past couple weeks. So, or at least one. Bo Meyer's gone to Old Miss. Is anybody else committed elsewhere? No, we're looking pretty solid. So, three spots left on the board. I'm going to fill those. And then, uh, well, we'll get into this game again at home. So, that's good news for us. But uh, we'll jump in at the uniform selection after I fill the board back up. So... Miami is a 95 overall team, which was only a two overall advantage on us. They have a 99 offense, though, and they're even with us at the 92 defense, which is great news. Um, they should have a, a cool away alternate, I feel like, that we could give them. Maybe we get a little crazy with it. Uh, I'm not sure I see anything that's super cool. So many options for Miami, which is awesome. Their standard away is with the orange pants. Can we just give them a different helmet? They just have the, the white and Miami Knights. That's right. Uh, uh, You know what? I'm not against this. I'm not against this. Maybe the green pants? Nah, I like the orange. Just give them the black helmet. Change it up a little bit. And for us, we've worn our standard homes. We've worn the all blacks. So let's just combine the two. 
black jersey, black helmet, teal pants, and a big opportunity to get a win on a team in our division. Again, Miami with a pretty stellar offense so far. They pass the ball extremely well. They don't do a whole lot running, which is backwards of what we do a good job defending. Their defense, okay. They can't seem to stop the run though, and they give up a lot of points, which is good news for us. So if we can keep this a low scoring affair, I think that we come out on top. Uh, we both score the same amount of points per game, but somehow they're ranked ahead of us, which is interesting. Visiting prospects, uh, it's more than just these three. I think it was, what, five? So passing for 250, running for 100, getting sacks, all that's always going to be uh, very useful as their top players, a 98 overall free safety, a 97 overall quarterback, and a 96 overall left guard. Not good news. They do have a defensive tackle out with a broken ankle, but maybe a little bit worried. We're going to have to play very well to win this game. At the start of the season, it was a new stadium every week. Now it's our third week in a row here at Brooks Stadium in Conway. Another beautiful day for us as Miami will win the toss. So I assume that we're going to start with the ball. And uh, only one mile an hour win, so not much to deal with today. Let's see. Can we get this one done? Game is underway. I'm going to return this with Marquise. I always got to give him a chance, especially early on in the game. And... He's got something for us. Not the best blocking, but he's able to make enough out of it and give us good field position to start this game. Now, once again, I want to get our running game going, give our offensive line a chance, especially because they haven't been doing a great job of stopping the run this season. And the better we do running the football, the more open it's going to be for our passing lanes. We give this one to CJ. And he's almost got the first down on his second carry. Was thinking about going with a dive on this one, but oh, they're bringing pressure. What are the odds that we could find somebody up? And let me hot route this a little bit. Let's get Logan mauled in. Going like the little hook and let's see. Can somebody beat their man? Yeah, I got to take the easy throw. Give it to Logan. Pick up the first down. Can't always go to Marquise deep. A couple of weeks ago in game, we had two Heisman candidates. Uh... Both guys trending downwards on that list, so maybe we can see a good game for both of them against a tough opponent. More importantly, though, we just got to make sure that we're getting this win. Across midfield on this second and six, we'll go with the read option. Radon's going to keep it, and we're going to slide down. So again, a third and short is we just don't want this quarterback to take hits today. Unless they show pressure, I am going to run this one. The weak zone to CJ Beasley. Got to cut it inside, and we do it quickly, and there's a lot of space available for the running back as we get our second first down from a third down conversion now the question is what could we do on this first down looking to pass to Braden Bennett who's come in for his first play but I'm gonna throw the time and give it to Marquise Jackson and let the man do some work for us another 17 yards on the play well, I wanted to call a jet sweep, but it was going to be to Logan Malden, and I can't run Malcolm Williams to the short side of the field on that play type so let's get a little bit weird with this hot route some people and see what we can pick up as we'll just go to the air on first down and outside the pocket oh my gosh Marquise is wide open never has he been that open uh on a play that he didn't just didn't burn somebody deep just standing there nobody around him easy first down and it's a first and goal now we were super stubborn with the fullback dive in the last game. We're going to continue it here a little bit further out from the four-yard line this time. But J.J. Barr says, no problem. Takes down the first man that he makes contact with and just continues to fall forward. And we're going to strike first in this game, a three-minute drive, but it finds the end zone. Not necessarily an incredible job from the Miami defense, although it is their offense that we expect to see doing the most uh, the work for this team. And, well, let's make sure that the offense comes out on the field. Lucky that Alex J Jackson falls down there. Tyler Van Dyke coming in to try and lead his team to victory. We know that these guys like to pass the ball. So whatever we can do to stop that in any form would be fantastic as this quarterback all the time in the world finds a man wide open with so much space. 39 yards on the first play from scrimmage. And they're going to immediately go into the hurry up. I'm not so sure that the zone's going to work out for us. So let's uh, look for something else. Quarterback going out to the edge. That looked like a designed carry for the quarterback. And Van Dyke loses four yards. They're going to go five wide on this one. And trying to defend. 
They go with the little curl, and we knock him out of bounds. Redding the third gets eight yards. Much as I don't want to, I think that there's a chance that the 3-3-5 uh, could be the key for us today. Guys, open Kale Mackey. Perfect timing to get there. Are you kidding me? Lays his man out, causes the incompletion. And I don't remember. I don't think uh, we know if their kicker's any good. So we're going to send Marquise back to maybe return this field goal attempt. It looks good, and yeah, it had more than enough distance. So Miami does score, but we hold them to a field goal, and that'll give us a chance to potentially extend our lead. Always love to see that the first time out from the defense. Great hit from Kale Mackey to force that fourth down, and maybe, just maybe, we can get the right blocking. Oh my gosh, a pancake for Marquise, and I did a bad job. I should have kept him out closer to the edge. Another okay return, but that had a chance to be great. I just ran pretty much right into a defender. So first and 10, offense can get to work. Running the ball, CJ Beasley picks up yards. There's a flag. I'm going to expect this to be a holding or a clipping. And yeah, this one's going to come back quite a ways. So it's a loss of eight yards, essentially. First and 18, as we will try to run on this first down and get some of it back that's not gonna do it Braden gets four they say but it's second and 15 now that's the type of play that could really be a drive killer they're playing off of Marquise quite a bit which is oh never mind they're gonna push up on him let's send him deep see what we can do got to keep the drive or the play alive long enough oh my gosh Marquise absolutely wide open has to slow down a little bit because the pass wasn't uh in front of him enough but how about that? Radon finding his man way downfield, and they're going to make us pass again because it looks like they want to bring some pressure. And on first down, the pressure's coming immediately. We're going to maybe get outside the pocket. I don't know what button I just hit. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> Throwing it across the field. Somehow Marquise is wide open, and he almost scored a touchdown on that. I don't, that was pure luck. Oh, wow. So it's first and goal from the one, and we're going to give it to J.J. Barr, a fullback dive up the middle, and he's got his second touchdown of the day. What is... <laughs> I could not have been more lucky there. Typically, when I make a throw like that where I can't even see the receiver, it gets intercepted, but instead, it's now 14-3, to so I can't complain too much. Uh, if the defense gets a stop here, I'm feeling real good about this game. All right, defense, see what they can do. We are going to try the nickel as they go 3-3-5, and, well, we just broke up the screen. Keep seeing those five wide sets from the offense, and we're doing a decent job stopping them. This one a run. We pull them down to force the third down. I don't like that we gave up five yards. Curious if we can get the stop now. They will step back to pass, and the quarterback's looking for his man. Oh, <laughs> we got there, but it wasn't enough. So even though they get the first down, we're not going to change. I'm not worried about the defense getting pressure on this quarterback <laughs> because plays like that are happening. Dermot Finch just annihilated this guy. I don't think we're going to see another play in this quarter. As, no, they just barely get it off. So the final play of the first quarter sees them completing another pass. But again, a third down for them to have to convert as we're up 14-3. Sure, we got the ball first, but... Great stop from the defense the first time out, and the offense has been moving the ball no problem. Four wide receivers and a running back in the formation on this play as they will step back to throw, and over the middle, Don Riley gets in there and gets the deflection on a man who otherwise would have been open. That's going to force the punt team to come out for Miami, and the Hurricanes are going to have to give us the ball back. Oh, the defense is phenomenal so far this year. Like... Really, not much that we can say bad about them as Marquis trying to return this. Not a lot of room to go, so I'm happy just to be out past the 20-yard line. Let's see what Braden Bennett can do as we go with the counter this time out towards the edge. The blocking is phenomenal for Braden. He's not got the speed to take it to the house, but that is a fantastic 23-yard carry on first down to open up this drive. Look at the blocking out on the edge. One man there, uh, if... We could have got him, would have been gone. Malcolm Williams just couldn't quite get the angle. I don't blame him for not putting a hand on the guy. Don't want to get called for a penalty there. We'll keep this one on the ground with a read option and radon. Ooh, again, trying to slide down, but we take a hit. 
still nine and a half pretty much 10 yards there gonna go play action on this one we'll see how they respond as gonna get outside the pocket and i'm throwing this one up for marquise he beat his man but the pass is just a little bit overthrown the first incompletion of the day for radon if he could have just taken a little bit of mustard off that, that would have been a beautiful, beautiful play. Instead, third and inches. We're going to hand this one off on the read option. Give it to CJ Beasley. And I think he had more yards on the table, but we still got the first down. We'll give it to him again on this first down, though. Blocking, holding up pretty well. And CJ just got to fight through that contact and pull his man over. There's eight more for him. At this point, it seems to me like... Any of the recruits visiting that had offensive goals, be it the 100 yards rushing or the 250 passing, are likely going to see those met because we are moving the ball with ease. A slide tackle from right on there gets the first down. I want to see what we can do on this play action as over the middle. Oh, I think that was Logan Malden. Our A was wide open, but the pressure came too quick and we take a nine yard sack there. Man just went unblocked off the edge, but this is where we could get him. Marquise has been looking real good so far in this game. I want to see. No, they won't push up on him. We're going to go to the air, and I'm throwing it up for him. He's burned his man before. He's going to get in front of him again in the diving. One-handed catch into the end zone. Finds Marquise 39 yards downfield, and we score another touchdown. A beautiful pass. Only Radon's man was going to get to that one. A little bit wobbly, but way to hold on to it as he high points it. Just... A fantastic touchdown. And if that's how the offense wants to respond to uh, the defense getting a big play, I'm all for it. We give up the sack and then immediately hit him with the long bomb touchdown pass. At what point do we think that this offense changes up their game plan? Because it's not working well enough for him. Is this one picked off by Manny Stokes? Oh, he's able to jump the route and things are going really, really bad for the Hurricanes. No replay review confirms to me that that one was very clearly a foot in bounds for Manny. And now a chance to open this game up completely. Going to run Beasley out a little bit towards the edge. Going to spin move forward for four yards. How about uh, another read option? We are in great field position. Right on plenty of space to work with. Ooh, juked into a big hit. I thought maybe we could have beaten that guy with the juke, but instead we get punished for it. It's third down, I'm taking a bit of a risk here, though. CJ Beasley in, and I'm looking at the counter. No deep safeties. Blitz coming off the edge. We're going to lose yards. Fourth and seven. We might be taking a field goal on this drive. Unfortunately, though, it would be a 50-yard field goal, and I don't think that we have the leg for that on the kicker, so we're going to go for it on fourth and seven, and I'm throwing this to Marquise. He's wide open. He's got the catch. He's out of bounds. And now we're inside the red zone. The past couple of games have been real quiet for Jackson, but he's already got six catches for 150 yards and a touchdown in the first half alone. We're not even done with the first half. Big carry there for CJ Beasley up the middle. I'm going to go with another counter here on second down. And CJ just cutting it upfield. Gets a block and CJ Beasley. Oh, can't quite fall forward into the end zone, but gives us the first and goal inside the five. And because apparently now we're a fullback dive kind of team, J.J. Bars getting another carry, and J.J. Bars getting another touchdown, 28-3. to three. We are just putting a shellacking onto Miami right now. If we could manage to score more points than this half and, and hold them at three, this is game over in just two quarters. Need the defense to step up one more time. I would love another turnover, but just a stop, uh, maybe force them to punt it away would be fine. The passing game really has not worked for the Hurricanes, though, so I'm curious. When are they going to go away from it? Quarterback's going to start to scramble now, and this is dangerous. You, oh, oh, oh we're going to be trying to strip the ball. When this quarterback runs 100%, I'm going to try to strip him. There's a false start from, I think that was the left guard. That'll back them up after they just got a positive play. So only rushing three on all of these. Can we continue to see success? This one, a little bit of a draw. And Kale Mackey just brought the smack down. Sure, they got three yards out of the play, but because of the false start, it's kind of like it's a loss of two. So second and 12. 
What will we see is they will step back to pass again. Quarterback, nothing doing. He's going to have to throw that one away. And with a minute and 10 left in the half, that's third and 12. We're going to see five wide from this Miami team. They'll step back, looking to throw. They go over the middle. They have a man, but blanketed by receivers and well short of the line to gain. So we've taken our first time out, and we've got Marquis back to return a punt. A minute left in the half. That's plenty of time for us to score. In fact, it could just be one play. This could be returnable for Marquis if he stays in bounds, and there's already a flag on the play. That was awfully quick. I hope this isn't a clipping, but I assume it will be. Personal foul. Shame. So it's Sandcastle, the one getting called on the play, which is a shame. Backs us up inside our own 18, but... Uh, oh my gosh, a chance. Chad Bradshaw with the catch, and he might be gone on the first play of the drive. Oh my goodness, I don't know what happened there, but the coverage uh, broke down for Miami. That's 82 yards to the house. Radon Rantel, 8-9, 238 through the air in the first half alone, and we are running away with this. I might be feeling greedy here, but there's a chance that we could score more points. 35-3, to they take the touchback. And I expect the defense to continue to get stops here. The way that they're playing so far kind of forced them into throwing that one. They will let the clock run here. And I'm just going to continue to try to guard them properly. Can't get the right user. There we go. We're on Phillips. Are they letting the clock run? It seems like it. So Miami might have given up. Inside 10 seconds now. Will we see them run another play? Yes, they're going to run a slip screen. Oh, that could have been best case scenario. Clock will run out. Maybe should have taken the timeouts to try to get them to be forced to give us the ball back. But again, sometimes I want to get greedy. Sometimes it's not too smart. We get ahead into the locker rooms up 35 to 3. I've got nothing to say about or no criticisms, at least of either side of our uh, team, either unit. Offense, moving the ball phenomenally, running, passing. Uh, defense has given up a couple of big plays, but has created turnovers, has forced them to punt the ball away, and has only given up three points. So uh, this is a blowout. As we kick off this second half, uh, and if you're enjoying this video, this game, please feel free to hit the like. It helps get these videos shared with more people, and the bigger the channel gets, the more crazy stuff that I can do. Got some ideas for uh, some new series. But it's this game that we need to focus on for now. They're going to go with the draw on first down, and it's not going to go anywhere. Even when they run the ball, they're not getting anything. I just think that our play here in the 3-3-5 is the complete answer to stopping this Miami team. They're going to scramble, but Sidney McRae gets the diving tackle, so they only get four yards. Third and five. For this team to try to convert to stay alive in the game, they'll move guys out, and I made the perfect read, so we get the stop. A perfect three and out from the defense there. And Miami, although they might be desperate, is not stupid, and they're going to punt this ball away. So a chance to just continue to add to the lead. This is absurd. This is a 95 overall Miami team, and it's not going all that well for a Marquise with a great return here gets us. Uh, I think that was almost to the 45-yard line. So just utter domination right now. Try to keep running the ball as much as we're passing it. Uh, the balanced approach has seemed to work pretty well. And now we're officially over 100 yards rushing as a team. And we will keep it on the ground here with a run to Braden Bennett on second and six. Good double spin move to break free. Oh my gosh, that should have been a touchdown. I was holding forward on the stick because I thought I was going to come in contact and I was going to try to truck him. Uh, that should have been uh, such an easy touchdown for Braden, but still a good pickup. If he had managed to take that for six, 100%, that would have been Sports Center top 10 worthy as we will step outside the pocket. And Beasley's wide open. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. Had the touchdown, but can't quite get there as we find him through the air. So far today, we're perfect in the red zone. I hope to keep it that way. A run on first down. Go in with the halfback dive. I thought we were a little bit too far up for the fullback dive, but we won't get a chance for J.J. Barr to score another one. Beasley gets in for six. And this game is just not fair. Feels like we're playing a JV team. Miami getting absolutely boat raced 
in this one so far. If this is the way that the team wants to play this year with all the talent that we have potentially coming in next year, I feel bad for the rest of the NCAA quarterback all the time in the world. He's going to throw up and he does find somebody. Smith maybe should have been there to get the hit, but they do get 31 yards. Nice and patient read from the quarterback to find his man that time. We'll see if he can do it again. As No, he's going to have to scramble. And oh my gosh, I whiffed. I absolutely whiffed. Trying to strip the ball, we can't do it. And they're in field goal range, so it's likely we're going to give up points here. Never know. We could end up pulling out a turnover, though. Stepping back to pass again. Quarterback waiting. And he's going to have to throw that one away. Would love to get a sack, but when we're only rushing three, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. For some reason, I just like the idea of uh, forcing them to throw at a really good coverage as opposed to... Oh, no. Manny! Oh, my user! I should have had the pick there, but I missed it. Uh-oh. Uh, I got to take a timeout here. Ah, we're going to run it. Not in the right defense. We're in the zone this time. Pressure coming to the quarterback. We won't give up the timeout yet, but it's awfully close. Second and goal. I'm bringing the, the pressure on this one. Calling it a run up the middle. It is. We got there in time, but Alex Timmons gets into the end zone. So won't keep Miami to single digits in this game, but we're okay. Realistically, I'm going to say we gave that up because I missed an easy user pick with Manny and gave them uh, a, basically a free first and goal. But now it's time for the defense to get a little bit of a breather in the offense can try to put up some more points. Oh, look at how they're playing Marquise. Why should I not just throw this straight to him? He's gone. Easiest touchdown of his career. He even catches it in stride. One play, Marquise is gone. Uh, what are the odds he makes it back up onto the Heisman watch list after this game? Right on 11 to 10 through the air. And he just finds another bomb to... Uh, easily the best player on this team, I think, right now in Marquise Jackson. Well, the defense didn't really get a chance to rest like I expected them to. So hopefully they are feeling fresh enough to get out and play. Uh, maybe they'll be fired up after giving up points on the last one. We're just going to continue to do what's been working so far in this game as quarterback threw a risky one to Restrepo, but he came down with it. I'm tempted to maybe start bringing some blitzes, maybe bringing the safeties, but I don't want to give up too many easy points. Kale Mackey getting kind of just easily dusted on the corner out there. Uh, maybe we'll catch the offensive lineman off guard here. Bringing the blitz, which we haven't really done at all this game. They go with the screen, unfortunately, but it is a loss of four. Just didn't really get the chance for a blitz to work. So let's do it again. Second and 14, try to get the safeties involved, and... Pressure on the quarterback. He's thrown it up. Kale Mackey just a little bit too slow, and they get 20 yards. So, so close to him getting into the right position on that play as, oh, he was there, and I'm going to get called for a pass interference. I should have ball hawked instead of just trying to hit him. Oh, I'm making so many user errors today. Well, I'm going to stay here in this 4-3 for a little bit and see if we can, you know, get some pressure on this quarterback. Although, I'm not a huge fan of it. I left the running back wide open over the middle because I thought he was going to throw the out route and he instead scrambled. For sure got lucky that he took off instead of making the throw, but certainly not going to complain. They're stepping back to pass. This is a screen. I don't know if we can get there. Taylor can't get him. It needs to be Smith, and he does. Third and inches, we should not have given up three yards there. I'm going safety blitz again. Can we get in here and cause some disruption? It's this option. Great pitch out. Great pitch out, and they're going to score the touchdown on it. Maybe could have had an angle, but just missed it initially. And my users kind of cost us, but they're going to score their second touchdown of the game. I got to be fair that the defense, they've been out on the field for so much of this game that they're going to start making mistakes as they get more and more tired. But uh, I, I, I just can't be disappointed. They've played so phenomenally to let us open up this game. Now I'm going to call another pass play here. Okay, they've come out not looking like complete doofuses. So we're going to audible and run this ball, give it to Braden Bennett and let him pick up some yards on the ground and let that clock keep moving. And uh, we'll go ahead and start burning the clock on this third quarter just to get it into the fourth quarter a little bit sooner. Uh, CJ fumbles the ball. Oh my gosh, thank goodness for Gamara Kelly. 
Oh, almost the turnover, which would have given Miami a little bit of life. Instead, we hold on to it. And we can just go into the fourth quarter. Still alive on this drive. We are just, again, just uh, destroying them. Nothing they can do to stop our offense, really. So with six minutes left to play in this game, it's 49-17. And uh, a yard is all we need to keep this drive alive with a first down. CJ's got it. Run it up the middle. Holds on to the ball. No fumble that time. And we get a little bit of extra XP as well. Two guys on Marquise Jackson here. We'll see if either of them can keep up. As Yeah, it kind of looks like it would be stupid to throw it to him. I could throw that right bumper wide. Might have both been open instead. Let's just run it with Radon. Get the 21 yards on the ground. You can't throw an interception if you don't throw the ball. So absolutely phenomenal there. Radon keeping it on this one and on the option. Ooh, that got real scary. He ends up taking a bit of a hit, but the spin move just broke a man's ankles. We'll bring Malcolm Williams in motion on the fly sweep on second and one. And there's nowhere for him to go. He's going to lose two yards. It'll bring up a third down for us. And while we are burning the clock here, I'm still playing my normal offense. So we will step back to throw. Uh, nothing open yet. Right bumper is open. I just don't know if I can get it there comfortably. Instead, we'll have Raid on takeoff. Oh, I need to stop letting him take hits. Either He's either going to get injured or fumble if I allow him to keep taking them. Uh, I'm saying that's it for him keeping the football for the rest of this day. So we'll let him throw. We'll let him hand the ball off, but I'm not going to try to scramble or give him the read option anymore. If he can find Braden Bennett in the air, that would be great news. And yeah, there's the running back getting a reception and picking up a couple more yards. Radon throwing over 90% on the day as we'll see. Can we find Marquise Jackson in the end zone? Nah, let's just find Logan Malden and get that first and goal to allow us to really just keep burning the clock. Minute and a half left in this one. Miami, I don't want to let them back out onto the field. They might have something to say about it, though, as we do lose two yards on first down. Dang it, this is that weird one. Braden Bennett back in at quarterback for some reason. He's going to hand the ball off to Beasley. I still haven't checked to see if that's like some weird formation sub, but he's good enough at handing the ball off, I guess. We get three yards back. And this should be the final play of the game, as we'll see if we can maybe find the end zone. Bring Marquise in and not take the delay a game. Marquise may be open. A is open. Let's just, I said I wasn't going to let Radon scramble, but we're going to let him in anyways. 25 extra XP is the real reason why I wanted to make sure that we scored. Uh, also maybe to rub it into Miami, make the margin of victory look a little bit better. This extra point's going to end our game for us. And it's going to be 56 to 17. Oh, man, I've never seen anything better. And there it is. Big Red, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers, they beat Purdue. The number three team in the country takes their first loss of the season in a close three-point game. And we managed to pick up our eighth win. We're cruising right now. In a groove. We just got to hope it holds up for the rest of the season. Uh, I don't think we have the most difficult schedule ahead of us. So let's just keep the momentum going forward and let's start to get some recruits to commit also maybe a level up would be nice we're awfully close um hopefully when we sim through to the end of the week we can get there what a beautiful game for us though we started off strong and never looked back 14 points in the first 21 in the second and 14 in the third just nothing that miami could do there we held them to 76 on the ground and 180 through the air uh and a lot of that came in that third quarter where the defense was kind of struggling. Only 6 minutes and 45 seconds on their time of possession. We just didn't really let their offense see the field for that whole first half. And creating a turnover means, again, we're positive this season in the turnover differential. Something we've never seen. Radon Randall, obvious offensive player of the game at 12 of 13 for 353 yards. Another 9 carries for 54 yards. 4 total touchdowns for him. And Manny Stokes with the interception. A chance for another, but my user kind of screwed that up all around. A beautiful game. And again, 8-0 at this point. We haven't even had a bye week yet. As we can sim to the week 9 where we'll be playing Pitt. 
And again, I, I'm sure Pitt's not going to be, you know, a team to roll over. But if we have this momentum and we can continue to play this well, I'm not sure what they can do to stop us. Oh, we do get our level up, which is good news. Means we only spent one week with, oh my gosh, with a lower amount of points. It's begun. 81 overall wide receiver Will Dixon is committed. 80 overall left guard Nick Pittman is committed. 79 overall defensive tackle Jeremy Callahan is committed. Ian Bain, a 77 overall running back, is committed. Guys ready to visit. Oh boy, we just freed up a lot of points. Um, eight consecutive wins. We signed a five star. We signed three four stars. Two gems. That's a lot of XP for us. No wonder we leveled up. Honestly, just barely though. 173 as we are now a top three coach in the country. Let's go ahead while we're here and just get this last level up into the closer. Uh, the next ones that we'll be going for will be letter of intent to get those extra points at the end of the season during the, uh, you know, looking for like national signing day. But, oh, wow. Okay. This season is going so well. I can't believe it. Move up a spot because Purdue at number three lost to Nebraska. Nebraska jumps all the way up to number four. So the Big Ten, you know, loses one top five team games, gains another. Uh, Penn State destroyed Rutgers. Texas did a good job stopping Iowa State. We slaughtered Miami. So a lot of big stuff. Oh, it was an overtime win. I didn't even notice that for Nebraska in their victory over Purdue. Any other big losses? Number six, Kansas. And number five, Iowa. Both took losses. Uh, I know their first loss of the season. I love to see that happening. Auburn at number eight took their second loss. Number seven, Georgia took their second as well. Uh, USC took their third. And Ole Miss and Alabama, I assume, also lost because they both drop out all around. Just a beautiful week for us in the media poll. We're still sitting at number three. And the BCS poll is out the first iteration of it. And we're sitting at three there as well. So... Uh, again, with the playoff system, BCS doesn't matter quite as much if we win our conference championship. But should we lose the conference championship? Hopefully we lose it to a, like a good team who's highly ranked because we need to be uh, really high up for the at-large bid. But I'm just not going to worry about it. How about our Heisman watch? Uh, okay, Radon jumps back up a spot after that big game, which is fantastic. Uh, touchdown interception ratio looking a little bit better. Completion percentage starting to go up a little bit. Um, 580 yards rushing and seven rushing touchdowns. So he's starting to get there. And remember, he's just a redshirt freshman. So all good things for us there. Take a quick look at the pit game. Yeah, okay. Looks like it'll be pretty solid for us. B plus, they should probably be a high 80 overall team. Um, potentially a low 90. Minus eight in the turnover differential, though, as the <laughs> Panthers are sitting at one and five. You hate to see it if you're from Pittsburgh. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Oh, my goodness, that was fantastic. If you think that we're going to win the entire thing, if you think that we could be stopped on this season at all, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. And if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more of these uh, just absolutely bonkers games from us. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button. All three of those things, again, do such an uh, incredible job at helping this channel grow. And the bigger it gets, the, the more time I can afford to invest into it. So please feel free to do all of those. And while you're doing them, maybe head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.